So you have the intellect, you have the faith and the reason. Does one ever conflict with the other? I mean, you say, that's a great faith story, but does your head ever get in the way of your heart? Uh, all the time. I am like a total head person. Like, they, t they say that, you know, um, emotions, people have different emotional ranges. You know, there's the emotional range of an eight box of crayons, and then there's the emotional range of a 164 with sharpener. I am like the eight. I'm like, how are you? Fine. <laughs> are you feeling angry? Yes, me, angry. <laughs> like, I can't get much deeper than that. So it's all up here. Um, and so sometimes that uh, creates trouble for me because for me, like, faith is so much a heart thing. And if I'm spending all my time up here, then I'm not, re I can't get to here. Um, so it's hard for me to get down to here. And um, recently I was reading something that said um, the best way, the fastest way from here to here is through your hands. And that made perfect sense to me because I'm like, I never thought I was a kinesthetic learner. I always thought I was a visual learner, but visual for me is all up here. But if I'm working with my hands, something like gets my mind disengaged and then I have to be from the heart. So. Now I know that when I get involved physically with something, it helps me get to the heart. You, you have a job now that's, to me, incredibly difficult or challenging to deal with the faith and kids growing up. What, what works? What, for the people that are doing it, what your story and what works, what doesn't work, or what beliefs or approaches that you like to use to touch kids, because it's an incredible, great feeling when you can see someone change at ages that amaze me. But what's happened? What's your approach? What? Because right. I clearly know you think about figuring out the best way to do it or what oh, would work. Oh, definitely. Like, yes. I am like a curriculum junkie. Right. That's my, that's my head stuff coming out. Um, so I think... I think that kids, teenagers, aren't different, really, than adults um, as far as approaches to faith. Um, I think everyone has had experiences of faith, but sometimes people don't have the language to use. Like I was saying, I didn't have that language to express what I was going through. Um, so it's kind of like, uh, like when you go to therapy and people are like, you already have the answers within you. I think people have a lot of that within them and it's just helping them to draw it out and name it and the best way to do that is discussion so like the more the kids are talking or doing um, the more that they're directly involved and the same for adults but they have to be comfortable doing it right how do right. you get them to do it I don't know right um, so we do a, we do a couple things here first games is really big so we use games for kids and a lot of times we use jokes for adults so we have whatever game it is, and it's hilarious because now they know me that the game generally has a faith lesson in it, and, but sometimes it's really a stretch to like get from there to there. So they're like, ooh, I wonder how she's going to make this work today. Um, so games really, like, it, it creates a bond, and it helps loosen people up and get their creativity flowing. Same thing with it, jokes for adults. You know, like... If you're telling jokes, and mine are all bad jokes, then people are like, you're not a holy roller, you're just a regular person, we're all just regular people, and we're just on this journey together. So they think, some think you're a holy roller just by your position? Correct, correct. Yeah. But I'm not. Right, no, no. I, <laughs> I'm a bad I, joke teller. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so warm-ups is really important. Um, and then building that environment of trust. So sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes with kids, we'll use what's called the mutual invitation method. So it's a way of dialogue. So if you have a small group, um, you know, I'll bring up a topic and I'll give kind of a short answer, not too long. And then I'll say, Steve, I invite you to share. And then you can share and no one can interrupt you. Or you can pass and then you would invite Tom to share. And then he can share, or he can pass, and then eventually it all. The comes pass back is around. important. <laughs> right, but no one, not really, once they get to know each other, no one passes because they like the fact that they can talk without being interrupted. 
because we all interrupt everyone all the time in our society. So for them to be able to talk uninterrupted, pause when they want to pause, keep going when they want to keep going, they can say what's really on their heart. And we got to just keep it real. Um, last year we did an alpha program with the youth. They have an alpha for youth program. And part of it is you see on the video people, kids from around the world answering a certain question, like, do you go to church? And so the kids in the video are like, um, you know, I like going to church when there's not a service going on. Or when I went to my cousin's baptism. Or no, I've never been to church in my life. And so then the kids, when the, our kids, when they talk, they can be real about, okay, yeah, I'm not going to give you the answer. I want, you want, you know, you th I think you want to hear. Give you the truth. I'm going to give you the truth. Because I've seen so, I've heard worse. <laughs> yeah, like you need, the, you got to start with what's real. You can't, I mean, religion is about, uh, and faith is about, it's personal and it's about your life and it's about being real before God. Like, why make anything up if God knows everything? I'm not going to argue with you. I just yeah. We always like to give the person a chance to finish to know what you would want to emphasize about faith. But I think as long as we we could do two hours, there's a group that are going to remember your story and go, "That was me. That happened to me. I didn't know how to explain it. I mean, it's a. I don't. I don't want to say it's a miracle, but it's it's one of those moments that you feel you don't know how to say it because you don't know if you're the only one who ever felt it and you viewed it as the Holy Spirit. I mean, that's a that's a moment some people get some don't I don't know maybe everybody gets it but they're gonna you will have touched people that either will think of it the same way you did or have another way to explain it I mean it's I don't know if it's huge to you it is but oh yeah I mean when you tell other people I'm sure you have what is their response are they yeah I get it or whoa okay um, I think, you know, some people have had similar experiences, and so sometimes it's the first time they get to share, like, oh, yeah, I, I had something like this. Or people that are more seasoned with the Spirit will be like, well, of course, you were filled with the Holy Spirit. And then, um, you know, kids, uh, some kids have had experiences like that, too, and other kids are like, wow, you know, that's pretty cool. Thanks for sharing that with me. Like, I've never had anyone be like, you're a complete weirdo. <laughs> Although I am a weirdo, but no, I've never had it. Really, ha haven't had that reaction because it comes from the heart. How can you say that someone's heart is weird? I don't know. You ask questions. I don't have an answer. I'm not going <laughs> to say no. But if we give you the last minute to to tell people your faith or what's most important to you, or if you have a minute to do it or two minutes, this is this is the time. Well, I told Tom beforehand. I said I. I because I have a big ego and I'm all in my head, I tend to just rattle on. But I always say, I wanted to say that God always moves first. You know, we're not the ones that are creating any of this on our own. We can open the gifts and we can say yes, but God is always making that first move. Um, you know, they, one of the images people use a lot today is there's a painting in uh, St. Paul's Cathedral in London of Jesus knocking on a door and it's beautiful and it's a wooden door with a garden around it and the key thing about it is that there's no doorknob so that Jesus can't open the door the person inside has to open the door um, so Jesus is always knocking and then we have to see how to respond um, and I don't want to also make this Pollyannish because Tom knows I've cried many times with him there is a lot of suffering in my life. Um, it's not all happy, happy, joy, joy. Um, but I truly believe that God is with us in our suffering and that we are saved not from suffering, but saved through suffering. And suffering is a mystery and we can't fully understand why some things happen. Um, but um, it really does pry open your heart. Um, when I first started uh, in faith uh, as an adult, I read something by Anthony DeMello, and he said, there's two ways to come to faith, listening or suffering, and listening is harder. And because I have such a big mouth, um, 
God, I think, chose the suffering route because I need to be clubbed over the head a few times. Um, so it's not fun, but it is effective. I was going to ask about suffering, so this is perfect. I think we ought to just make this the Liz Kuhn podcast. I'll take a break. You guys, you know, go week to week. And no, it's... That was, this is, that was yeah, marvelous. They're, they're, marvelous. They're, is there anything else you would want somebody to know? Somebody who's hurting and pain, ready to throw the faith out the window. This isn't for me. I would say, again, going back to being real. I mean, St. Teresa of Avila said, you, know, you can complain all you want to God because God can take it. I would just say let it out and see where that takes you um yeah life really is brutal sometimes and we just got to be real about it um you know jesus isn't pollyanna jesus was brutalized himself so he's no stranger to brutality and we have to realize that um he's in solidarity with our own brutality and the brutality that's happening in the world I can't speak for a pit, but thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I would say that the engineering world's loss is the ministry's gain. Liz Kuhn, Queen of Apostles, thank you very much for being on the uh, Homer and Pip podcast called My Faith. It was wonderful. Thank you for asking me. See you next time. Fantastic. That was a great show. Yeah. Is there any chance we could get you to do one of your jokes? Oh, there, for the camera? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, he, he, the, the ones that we tell at Alpha are, uh, usually I try to pick like a weird, like whatever weird holiday it is, like National Saxophone Day, or then I tell one about the topic of the day. So this was the one about prayer, where um, the mother wants to show off to her friends that she's having over for lunch, how wonderful she's raising her children and instructing them in prayer. And so... The two families are gathered, you know, for lunch, and she says to little Johnny, Johnny, could you, could you lead us in prayer today? Johnny's like, Mom, I, I don't want to. She's like, oh, please, you know, just say what Dad said at breakfast. And he says, God, why are these awful people coming over for lunch today? <laughs> so, that's, yeah, they're groaners. That's good. That's not a groaner. <laughs> no, no, that's are, pretty good. That's very good. Thanks right. so much. Yeah. That was great. That was right. great. Thank you, Brett.